The Guardian Games have come to the tower, a battle between the classes to find out which is the most populated cl I mean, which class is the, it's the best at the game, or, so it's a competition between the classes. Let's talk quickly about how it works. First off, you gotta be wearing the class item for anything to happen, so make sure you do not forget to wear the class item. The objective of the Guardian Games is to collect medals for your class, and then the team with the most amount of medals wins the competition. The winners get to have their class item with the gold color palette for the next year, second place silver, third place bronze. Anyway, in order to get medals, you're gonna scoop them up from Ava and complete their objectives, varying from Crucible, Gambit, Forges, Destination, and Strikes, most of them involving getting kills. Turn in the medals for rewards at the podium. Ava also has bounties to complete, which are required to complete the bounties gold medal and also for a triumph. New medals are provided daily. There have been some reports that medals are being wiped from inventories after a reset or something. This is probably a bug, so try to turn them in immediately. Another part of the event are laurels. Laurels are generated when you use an ability to kill an enemy and they look like moats from Gambit. They are not a consumable, they do not go into your inventory, you just collect them, but laurels also do not go to the postmaster if they are not collected. Laurels are linked to certain triumphs, medals, mainly silver medals, bounties, and the ghost quest, which all require you to simply just pick them up. They do not appear to have a use outside of those things. So at the moment, I would not worry about picking them up if you do not have an objective that says you need to pick them up. Picking up laurels of your class will progress things much faster than laurels of other classes. As for a quick and dirty guide on laurel farming, Titans, Insurmountable Skull Fort and Striker Titan is going to be really good to you. I personally also like Middle and Bottom Tree Sunbreaker for throwing hammers or sunspots. Warlocks, you have Top Tree Dawnblade or Top Tree Stormcaller with Crown of Tempest. And Hunters can rock Top Tree Arc Strider utilizing Combination Blow with Dodging. A great Laurel farm, if you need them for the Triumph, is the Altar of Sorrow on the Moon. You can of course do the Whisper Mission farm, Shuro Chi farm, certain Dreaming City Ascendant challenges. Just make sure that wherever you go actually counts for the medal or bounty or thing that you're trying to complete, because not every destination works for everything. The exotic that you can earn from the event is a minigun in the heavy slot, but in order to get it, you must complete seven of the triumphs associated with the event, which all involve a good amount of participation in said event. Getting gold medals, getting any medals, completing bounties, collecting laurels, things like that. The ones I would recommend doing are the first seven in the list. Renowned, Great Deeds, Gold Medalist, Medalist, Show Your Colors, Represent, and Quintuple threat. These are a nice mix of things that you can do as fast as you'd like, and some of the easier metal objectives. You can swap the gold medals for world class if you don't want to chase the gold medals. Basically anything that isn't the 25 super kills in rumble matches. I don't know what sadist over there at Bungie taught in that triumph in this collection. Have fun with that one. Datto says full well knowing that he's probably going to do it. From the limited footage I've seen of the weapon, it looks like it shreds pretty darn hard. So based on that alone, I would say it's more worth going for than not going for. And that's basically how it works. And it is more or less how I thought it was going to work. Honestly, I was just expecting more bounties to do and this whole thing would have been just some bounty sprint to see who can complete the most bounties or public events or lost sectors within a three week time period. There's the slightest bit more nuance to it, but not by much. Medals are essentially bounties for the most part. Hell, the strike medal is basically what you do for the weekly bounty from Zavala. Most, if not all medals amount to kill enemies, collect laurels, kill even more enemies. At least I don't need to bust out specific guns, although the game will ask you for certain subclasses for bounties, along with these bounties that require you to get incredibly long distance super kills, which on Titan, let me tell ya, not that fun. As for picking which character I would like to win, I have a couple of pretty minor problems in the grand scheme. 
The first is that in order to get the exotic or the triumphs done as quickly as possible, you need to forego class loyalty. If you happen to have a bit of time on your hands, then going faster means jumping on other characters to get medals for them to progress your triumphs. This concept isn't new to Destiny, leveling up faster has always been done via playing all characters, but for an event where we're trying to see which class is best, I would have liked to have seen more of an incentive to stick with a particular class for the duration of the event, although I understand that that might mess with people who are choosing not to partake in the event. Again, very minor problem, you can still get the exotic well within the three week time period. Thankfully, the three ghost shells can be earned on the same character, one per week, and dare I say that the ghost shells might actually be worth getting. I got my Titan Shell, and it came with Speed Demon and Guiding Light, which are two perks that I've never seen on the same Ghost Shell. Maybe that's not a new thing, maybe I just actually looked at a Ghost Shell and didn't immediately dismantle it, but I thought that was nice. I'm torn on whether or not Bungie should have allowed people to non-stop grind medals. On the one hand, it's a competition to get the most medals. Why not allow those who want to grind like crazy the opportunity to do so to promote their favorite class? On the other hand, not having that pressure to grind out medals to win is some level of comforting. Next is the feeling that the whole thing is rigged from the start. Now look, is this thing rigged? Probably not. Incredibly unlikely not. I know Bungie is attempting to balance things thanks to there being significantly more Hunters than Titans and Warlocks. There is basically no point in Bungie rigging the event from a rewards perspective. All that is at stake is a class item customization option. The exotic isn't even linked to a class winning or anything. But Hunters winning every single day would definitely put a damper on any level of motivation to participate in the event more than the realization that you're essentially just doing bounties. So let's just say that I get why people are skeptical. As of the writing of this video, Hunters took day one, Titans took day two, and are currently leading on day three. Speaking of bounties, yeah, I, I think you know what's coming. I was hoping for a bit more than just a bounty grind, as I imagine most people were. I understand that there was probably going to be something like this coming as a way to track which class is doing the most stuff, but I was also hoping for some sort of specialty mode or activity that would be class-based. What about a 3v3v3 PvP thing? You know, three titans versus three warlocks versus three hunters. I'm sure it would be imbalanced as hell and we'd all be raging about how this is broken and that's broken, but at least it would have been something. Even a strike playlist where you can queue with only people of the same class to work together. Would people care about that at all? Just something to, to spice up the event. The fact that there is no unique class versus class activity in the game with the launch of this event or any activities where there is actual competition with the different classes is a massively missed opportunity. I don't really feel like I'm in the Guardian Olympics or anything. I don't feel like I'm competing. My guess as to why we didn't see anything like that is because of time constraints on Bungie's end, even if this might have been developed a little while ago. Overall, while the event branding and artwork is great, and of course the Eververse offers are great, I'm left with a feeling of apathy. My main motivator is getting the exotic. As out of place as it seems, why are we getting a weapon that looks like it should be dropping from a Cabal Colossus raid boss during Guardian games? I digress. If the exotic did not exist, I probably would not care about this event. I don't really care who wins. The concept of who can do the most bounties to me is not really an exciting one. It doesn't really feel like a competition, and even if it did, it's a little tough to feel like the event is not being skewed in some way, even though it's probably not. I realize that this is a free event though, and that it's probably not gonna have the bells and whistles that other events might have. Guardian Games in its current form is essentially the concrete base of a house, the foundation. Now, Bungie really needs to start working on building that house in that spot if they want this event to become anything remotely interesting. It's very possible that something else launches in the middle of the event that we just don't know about yet though. I'm pretty skeptical of that given the state of the game at the moment and feel like Bungie just needs to bring all of the heat that it can right from the start.
and I'm sure they realize that as well. But that is what I have for you on the Guardian games. Probably not too surprising, all things considered. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.